Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Luxembourg. Luxembourg, as you can see, is a very small landlocked nation in Western Europe. It's bordered by Belgium, by France, and by Germany. I actually am not sure how long this video is going to come out to be because its geography is very minimal. Its history, although very interesting, can be summed up very quickly. The, the first time I rehearsed this video, I did the history in like five minutes and went like, uh oh, I'm going to need to speak slower or something. And then I grabbed my tablet to look at Google Earth and really didn't find much to show you, but. I am going to show you the capital of Luxembourg City because it looks absolutely gorgeous on Google Earth. And I'm going to show you some of the land up here. So up north in this region is known as the Ursling. It is very mountainy. The mountains here are known as the Ardennes. They stretch all through this region here. The Ardennes is famous for the Battle of the Bulge massive World War II battle. We'll talk about that in its history a little bit. There are lots and lots of rivers crisscrossing all throughout Luxembourg, especially on the borders. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to mention them all, but you can see right here the River Sur makes this big reservoir right here. Pretty much the only like real large lake in Luxembourg. Because even though it is very mountainous, it's not very like, it's not like the Alps where it's all snowy and glacier. It's very lush and full of trees. It's very beautiful. The southern region down here is known as the Gutland, and it's pretty much where the majority of the population lives. It's much flatter, much more lush, and very beautiful as well along with lots of mining down in the south here in an area known as the Redlands. And that's pretty much it for geography, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's very busy bustling. And, um, I mean everything else I'm gonna tell you in history and on Google Earth, so let's just get started. So, there are people here throughout like the early stone age, things like that. The first known peoples to live here were the, the various Celtic tribes that would have inhabited this area. When the Romans came, they identified the Celts here as the Treveri. And there's a lot of evidence of these people still around today. You can still find remnants of their towns and cities, and, well not cities, but settlements I should say and lots of artifacts as well. It's really cool. So who exactly from the, from Rome <laughs> came up here wasn't the empire yet because the dude who came up here was Julius Caesar sometime around 50 BCE. He was conquering Gaul, which is now pretty much France today. So this area became part of what's known as the Gal Gallo-Roman civilization. So they retained a lot of their old customs, but implemented a lot of Roman things to it, like baths and customs and all of that, until the Franks invaded in the 4th century CE, the Franks being the descendants of the French today. Thanks to Charlemagne, the Carolingian Empire would have control of this area, and um, there was a bit of overlap between German speakers and the French speakers. The language mushed together essentially made the Luxembourgish language today. It's not quite French, not quite German, a bit of both, and a bit of neither. It's an unusual one. It sounds a little bit like you've got something like in your mouth while you're talking, like a big piece of gum. It's one of those languages. Anyway. Christianity was also introduced when the Franks would come and take over once they converted to Christianity in about um, the 690s. A very famous 
traveling priest, I believe, named Willebrord, <laughs> came and spread Christianity throughout the region and built the first abbey. It's very beautiful. He's a religious hero in Luxembourg to this day. So, in 963, this guy named Siegfried found this cool big rock in what's now Luxembourg City on top of this hill and was like, wow, this is the perfect place to build a fort. I could build a big old fort here and defend the land around it and slowly start taking more land because no one's going to stop me because this big rock is so big. And he named that area um, Luxembourg. <laughs> I've been practicing. It's very hard, but that's how we get the name Luxembourg. And he did just that. He built a big fort that would turn into a castle over time. And they started conquering areas and nobody could stop them because no one could infiltrate their big fort. Eventually the area became the County of Luxembourg in 1083. And throughout the years, it would really gain lots of political power, especially as they spread out in all directions to take more land for their county. The royal family as well, the, the royal family, they were counts, you know, had a lot of political influence. A lot of them became kings, particularly of Bohemia. One of them became Holy Roman Emperor at one point. And they were a very strong, pretty unstoppable clan, I suppose. <laughs> they uh, had very little hiccups. They hadn't, like, majority success in their reign of pretty much looks like this area here. But in 1443, they were left with no male heir. And the whole dynasty crumbled and the area would become absorbed by the sort of like next in line like the one who would have taken over but he already had a, a big part of land so it became part of Burgundy and then it was known as the Burgundian Netherlands because they had all this to move here so it was absorbed into that and this area was pretty chaotic politically in that the Habsburgs, the royal family over in Austria, which essentially controlled the Holy Roman Empire, wanted it. They would come and take over in 1482. There would be a lot of struggle between the people here of Luxembourg and the Habsburgs because the Habsburgs wanted to completely absorb it. The, the Luxembourgers, as they're known, said, no thank you. And there were quite a few uprisings and tiny rebellions. Eventually, the Spanish actually came and conquered the Habsburg Netherlands from 1556 to 1714, so it came under Spanish control. The Habsburgs would come and take it back. The French would come and take that. The Habsburgs would take it. It was a big back and forth. The Luxembourgers were in the middle here, none too pleased about anything going on. They just wanted you know, their own thing, like they used to have, and it was great, and they loved it. The last political invasion at this point in history, hold that thought, was by France in 1793. If you know your French history, it was a pretty chaotic time. There was a, a, a revolution going on. So after Napoleon came to power in France, and he did his thing, the powers of Europe came together to figure out what to do with all of the mess all over Europe that Napoleon left behind. And as they were drawing lines and making treaties and, you know, figuring out what to do, essentially, they gave this chunk here to France and this chunk here to Germany. And the Luxembourgers were like, wait, 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 hold on, what... Why would you do this? And they said, well, what if we made you a grand duchy? What if we elevated your political status? So instead of your rulers being counts, they would be dukes. And apparently this was good enough. And it is still a grand duchy to this day. It is the world's last grand duchy. The only one left in the world. Then Belgium would have its own independence movement. 
and they wound up conquering pretty much like this area of Luxembourg, which of course the Luxembourgers were none too pleased about. In 1839, during the, once Belgium had succeeded in achieving independence, there were negotiations on what should be where, and they gave all this land here to Belgium, giving us the borders of Luxembourg today. So as you can imagine, it was like kind of this size, and now it is not. It's much, much smaller today. But during those negotiations, because of course the Luxembourgers were like, hold on, this is even more not fair than before, the, the powers that be said, well, how about we grant you full independence? No one's going to try to bug you or invade you. You're just going to be your own thing. And that was what the Luxembourgers had wanted all this time. So they said, yes, please. And by the way, we're going to be neutral. We don't want to pardon any of your messy wars. And they agreed. And that's pretty much how Luxembourg remained until World War I. Germany invaded in 1914, violating their neutrality, which of course the Luxembourgers were none too pleased about. And they would actually invade again in World War II in 1940. It would be a lot more aggressive this time, as you can imagine. And this was when we have the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944 to January 1945. The Allies had come in on Normandy in France. The Germans decided to do one last big push, one last big front to try to stop this invasion from Normandy. They met here and clashed for a long time, and as you can imagine, it was snowy and cold and fierce, but the Allies would win out. It was very hard for the Luxembourgers as well. They were not too pleased about it. <laughs> so after the dust settled from World War II, Luxembourg decided that nobody is ever going to invade them ever again, ever. They joined the United Nations, they joined NATO, they joined the European Economic Community, which would eventually become the EU, and not just that, they are one of the EU capitals in Luxembourg City, which I'm going to show you because it's a really neat area of the city. There's a huge, huge EU government section, and it's where the European Court of Justice is located. They're also part of the Eurozone. They use the Euro as their currency. So, once World War II was over, Luxembourg's like, okay, we're part of this big international conglomeration of organizations. How are we going to maintain our status in the world? How are we going to show the world that, like, what we're all about? And they said steel production. So, they actually had a very successful steel production industry for a couple of decades until it started to falter. In the 1990s, they really got into finances and essentially became a financial hub of banks and a center for corporations to own bank accounts. And the industry boomed. Their economy exploded. I have um, my little trivia book I've been using for the trivia nights on my live streams says that Luxembourg has the highest GDP per capita as of 2021. That's how successful that industry has been. The only hiccup was in 2014 with the leak of the, the Luxembourg leaks, which exposed just how much of a tax haven this place was, and it was incredibly corrupt, and the Luxembourgers were none too pleased about that, but it was all exposed, and laws have been passed, and hopefully the worst of that is over. And that's essentially where Luxembourg is today. How did I do? All right. I extended my time by about 10 minutes. <laughs> not bad, not bad. So, that is the history of Luxembourg. Let me go grab my tablet. I'm going to show you what Luxembourg City looks like. It's so, so neat. You know what I forgot to mention in history? <laughs> is that during that time when Luxembourg was being conquered by the French and the Austrians and the Spanish at that one point, they all built a lot and a lot of forts and castles and battlements and walls all over Luxembourg. 
There's still over a hundred different castles and forts in Luxembourg today. I'm going to show you the, the oldest one, of course, the Big Rock, and the remnants of this really neat French wall. I don't want to get lost though, so let me go like this. Boom. Check it out. So up, zoom in, up here is the Big Rock, which, um, you can really tell it's a big rock from up there. And over here is this super cool French battlement, a remnant of an old fort. It has lots of cool tunnels and things inside of it and underneath it. It's, um, as you can tell, it's kind of fallen apart, but uh, it's still a neat place. So here's where we have the rock where the original walls were built. And then if we go over here we can see this is where the Grand Duke lives. This is his palace right here. So they've always been up on this big old rock. It's known as the Bok. And yeah, it's this really cool old timey settlement. If you play The Sims, it reminds me of Windenburg. <laughs> it's sort of like that. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful place. But let's hop to this end of the rock over here. We have a lot more, so you can see lots of ancient remnants of old forts here. And there's an old fort over here too, like they're just all over the place. It's so cool. And here's an old one up here that's now a history museum. Pretty cool. And then up here is the modern art museum, much more modern building, right? Here's a great city panorama. You can look out and see the city. Skyline. This this is the big Notre Dame Cathedral, it's known as. Beautiful. So you can look out. Oh, Ukraine. <laughs> Support for Ukraine. You can look out and see the city skyline. Isn't that neat? Stop. Go back. Over here you can see all of the big important EU buildings, which looks really cool from this 3D view, doesn't it? All kinds of administrative important, important things. And lots of cultural things too. There's, um, you know, housing, there's the big sports stadium, we let it low, it's a little blobby. <laughs> there's this big sports complex all over here. This beautiful, um, like, oof, it's so blobby, why isn't it loading? These are all trees dotting this big long road, it's really pretty. Um, it's, it's the Central Park. It's just a big, beautiful place. Another one over there, but that's kind of like out of the zone. There's, you know, more housing. You can kind of see the boulevard there now, now that I'm not so close. And yeah, it's just this huge, big, hilly area where all of the important things happen. From ancient times over here to more modern times over here. An absolutely remarkable city, isn't it? So much history all over the place, and yeah, it's, it's just a very beautiful place. Let me go back to 2D so I can show you this neat place I found up in the Ardennes. I don't want to get lost. Last time I did this, I wound up wandering through France and Belgium. Let me zoom all the way out so I can... Oh, see. I would have gotten so lost. <laughs> Luxembourg. Here we go. There's a really cool... Hmm. I don't know if it's going to pop up on its own. This really cool... War Memorial. Oops, I don't want to drop a pin. Somewhere up here, let me just... Maybe it's up here? No. Let me do what I did before. I just searched um, Battle of the Bulge <laughs> and found all the sites. Most of them are in Belgium, but over here... Um, here, let's just go like that. It's this. Oh, I was so far off. <laughs> the 
the stop Battle of the Bulge Trail, which look what they've done. They've put up little it looks like cardboard cutouts in all of the places where the battles occurred and the fighting and everything. I'm pretty sure they're taken from actual photographs that were taken in these spots and they just placed them, you know, in the real world. So it's like almost kind of ghost-like, you know. It's really cool. And some people fleeing the area. A little bomb there. Carrying their wounded. Isn't it fascinating? This would be such an incredible walk to take and explore and just remember and be thankful for all those soldiers who, you know, put everything on the line. Really incredible, I think. I really wanted to show you guys that. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, it is gorgeous countryside and rolling hills and plains and valleys and it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah. That's all I really wanted to show you on the tablet tonight. Those are all the cool things that I found. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Let me zoom out so you can see where we are exactly. Oh, right there in Europe.